two deals fell apart. If you look in your DMs, you'll find my tax all the way from 2018. Uh, and I have two deals fall apart and I had a mindset problem, you know, like, what the hell? You know, I'm just trying to, I'm working so hard and this thing's uh, not working for me. And then you called me and we spoke on the phone for like 30 minutes. And then uh, you helped me out a little bit. You know, you said you already you were ahead of the game. Already you were doing deals. You know, you're only like 18, 11 months in the business. Uh, you're doing deals, but you have to put a focus on people that you're trying to make money here on this on this person. You're trying to help them sell or buy. You're trying to make money. It's their decision. It's their property. They want to do whatever they want to do. And so it helped me out a lot. So that's that's um, it's a big. And I've been following your content for you know. That's amazing, man. Since 17, I think that's when so I you started. You me back in the day, and I just called you. Since then, 2021, I sold 132 houses, and wow. then 222 last year, and now we're going for 400. But we're now a team and a brokerage. A lot of my success was because I was following your stuff. So yeah. it was pretty good, you know. That's good um, stuff. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning back for, to our podcast. Today, I have with me Ricky, Ricky Carruth. Whoever's in real estate, if you're a real estate agent, you probably know Ricky. Uh, but for those, maybe there's one or two person who doesn't know. Maybe a little bit of uh, feedback on you, Ricky. So, uh, yeah, I'm from Alabama. Yeah. I uh, got in real estate when I was 20. It's 2002. So that's how, how old I am. And uh, no, nah, it's been a crazy ride. I uh, made a million dollars really fast. Yeah. <laughs> I lost everything. <laughs> Went back to roofing houses, uh, slept in my car for a while. Actually, it was over a year. I, I actually thought back about it. It was like over a year. And uh, I was eating out of people's refrigerators, staying at my buddy's house. That's when the crash happened. Mm. That's when you lost everything. What yeah. did you lose? Because you were buying and flipping properties? Is that was, that was the reason? So I didn't really understand how A, house flipping worked, and B, how real estate markets worked, and how to. You were chasing deals back yeah, then. Yeah, I mean, like, like I was flipping houses on no doc loans that yeah. were allowed back then. Yes. So I had like a million and a half plus worth of debt. Lord knows how many houses that I was in the middle of flipping. And, and then when the market started to turn, it's like the equity just evaporated right. overnight. And then I sold a bunch of them for exactly what I owed, just to get out from under them, didn't mm -hmm. make a dollar, and had to let a few of them go mm -hmm. back to foreclosure. So I got foreclosed on. And then, um, you know, there's there's that part of it, mm -hmm. you know. Then there was the part where I didn't understand how to continue to sell real estate as a real estate agent. Yeah, because market time. shifts, now you have yeah. to adapt. Yeah, and everybody has to go through that. Yeah. You know, but I just happened to go through it during the worst <laughs> recession. And you've been a realtor for a couple of years back then, yeah? Before the recession happened. So, in 2002, I got in the business. And my last deal was in 2005, mm -hmm. February 2005. Got out of the business. I went back to roofing for the rest of 2005 and 2006. Worked on the oil rig all year 2007. And then got back in real estate. I mean, I know I closed my first deal in May of 2008. I think I got back in it like... When you got back, yeah. It was like February, March. I think it was March. When you went back to the... After the crash, you, you went back to real estate. Did your mindset change? You started doing th sales differently? Uh, or you still, go, yeah, but like whenever I, you know, like I grew up roofing houses. So like I wake up every day and work as hard as I can. Yeah. So when I got into real estate in the beginning, I was just waking up every day, working as hard as I could. When I lost everything, I woke up every day and worked as hard as I could. When I got back right. in real estate. So like my day to day never changes. You know what I mean? That's what I try to tell part-time agents is that your day to day is not going to change. <laughs> yeah, I want to go full-time real estate. It's like, well, you get up every day and work all day now. You know, when you go full-time real estate, you're going to get up all day and work all day then. And then only after six months, you're going to see results, right? Well, I mean, these are part-time agents that are trying to go full-time. And once they start doing some deals, they'll go full-time, right? So this isn't, uh, some people do go cold turkey. I got six months worth of reserves. Let me just quit everything and That's go full-time. That's how I did full -time. it. Yeah. yeah. How did that it was tough. Oh, yeah. yeah, I had some savings, so that's. I figured it, I'm gonna have sales faster. I thought it's gonna be made easier. It, you continued to. You yeah. Never had to go back to a job. No, I just made. I just kept kept going. I I went into that, um, but I kept doing it. A lot it. of people don't. A lot of people have reserves for six months, 
and they don't get a sale that quick, they have to go back to their job. Yeah. Um, but it was and, tough. I thought about it. I mean, just kept when, going. you know, when you have reserve for six months, you have that financial pressure. It yeah. kind of affects your communication for sure. to your clients. Yeah. You know, they can kind of hear you're a little desperate. They can't, they don't sure. know why. They can't put their finger on it, but they have some kind of red flag mm -hmm. because, you know, the way your tone, something, yeah. something about the way you're talking yeah. just doesn't quite jive. And at the end of the day, it's because in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I got to make a deal because I only have two more months of reserves, you know. And that makes it really tough, I think. I think everybody should have a job. Should start part-time, yeah, slowly, start part -time. but put a lot of effort into this. Yeah. It's not going to happen by itself. My dad always said, don't quit a job, just add to it, which yes. meant ha always have two jobs. Um, so I always had two jobs. When I quit real estate and went to roofing, I was also serving tables at night. I would roof all day and serve tables all night. You know, yeah. I didn't care. You know, in 2008, I think 18, I was 11 months in the business. Uh, I reached out to you on the DM because the first time I heard you, it was a rock stars, uh, real estate rock stars podcast. Uh, I, li I really like what you had to say because you, uh, you, you talked about uh, making cold calls and then uh, Pat asks you, then when, if they're not interested in selling, you ask them, who do you know who's yeah. going to sell? And you said, no, I don't do that. I just ask them, mm -hmm. do they have a realtor and mm -hmm. give me your email. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you said, because when you're asking, do you know anybody else? You're putting like, hey, can you help me? Can you help yeah, yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I remember that and I'm like, who, who's Ricky? I'm just start researching this and that. So I kept you know, like, watch your stuff. And then uh, one time I had a deal, two deals fell apart. If you look in your DMs, you'll find my tax all the way from 2018. Uh, and I have two deals fall apart and I had a mindset problem. You know, like, what the hell? You know, I'm just trying to, I'm working so hard and this thing's uh, not working for me. And then you called me and we spoke on the phone for like 30 minutes. And then uh, you helped me out a little bit. You know, you said you already you were ahead of the game. Already you were doing deals. You know, you're only like 18, 11 months in the business. Uh, you're doing deals, but you have to put a focus on people that you trying to make money here on this on this person you're trying to help them sell or buy you trying to make money it's their decision it's their property they want to do whatever they want to do and so it helped me out a lot so that's that's um, it's a big and I've been following your content for you know that's amazing man since 17 I think that's when so I you started me back in the day and I just called you since then 2021 I sold 132 houses and wow. then 222 last year and now we're going for 400 but we're now a team and a brokerage a lot of my success was because I was following your stuff. So yeah. it was pretty good, you know? That's good um, stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. So right now, you're still selling it all? As far as day to day listings and sales and stuff. But so. you still do your weekly email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get so some clients I took for a that? step out of production. So dad handles all the day to day listing appointments, sales negotiations, all that stuff. And I'll step in and help him if he's out of town or yeah. if he's double booked or if he's sick or something like that. So if the phone call goes to you, you say, hey, call my dad? No, from I'll your... fill it out. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk to him and um, see what they got going on and stuff. Most everybody's calling calling dad now, though. Calling dad. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. his, his number's on the, uh, the weekly email. Oh, I see. And um, Mostly MLS. sellers? Mostly sellers? Mm, sellers and buyers. Buyers, too? Yeah. Yeah. Like in your product, like how many, do you know how many houses you sold throughout the years or no? Over a thousand. Over a thousand? Yeah, over a thousand. Um, and uh, w w it's mostly sellers or it's like 50-50? Uh, I would say probably 75% sellers. Yeah. Yeah, 75% sellers. But the buyers are mostly sellers who bought. Yeah, You know. right. So like, so like I focus primarily on property owners. You know, and when you do that, it really creates an efficient business because, you know, every client is such a high quality client because they could list, which is, you know, the greatest thing to agents ever. You have the power of all the other agents trying to sell that listing right. for you. And then, you know, when they become a buyer, they're the highest quality buyer because they already have experience in buying. So, um, and MLS is such a beautiful tool that we have. We don't have like I'm from I'm from Ukraine. We don't have that in Ukraine. Like this they this don't have thing. It in, uh, nowhere probably. Uh, Australia, and South Africa, and Brazil. I mean, they're dying. They're crying for MLS. It's just kind of structure. Beautiful thing. You put it up there. You have all the brokers and in the world trying to sell. You know, they'll, they'll, the sellers will go out and uh, list their property with like eight or ten agents. Yeah. And whoever brings the buyer first wins. You know, could you imagine every listing you had, there were like eight other agents who have the same property listed, yeah. trying to go find the buyer before you do, and you're really racing 
you know, whoever can find the buyer first wins. Um, it's a completely different mindset. But I've thought about those scenarios and those situations and how I would capitalize under those circumstances. And, you know, I would absolutely, completely annihilate that situation because, like, there's, there's advancements in technology right now uh, in the U.S. that we don't know about. Yeah. Right. Like there's there's things that will come for real estate agents, let's just say in eight years, 10 years that we have no we're oblivious to it right now. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever that advancement technology comes, you know, let's say 15 years from now, the people are going to look at whatever that advancement technology is and say, man, I couldn't I could never uh, live without this. Right. But here we are eight yeah. years before it comes out. Sure. Talking about how great MLS is before MLS came out right in the U.S. The book. Yeah, they had the book and yeah. everything else, and um, they just didn't know MLS was even a thing. Yeah, and they were out and there the crushing it. And the electronic signature, you know. And so, in these other countries, I would have such a stack of people looking for properties. Like I would build my inventory of people, probably mostly investors mm -hmm. or whatever, looking for properties, right? Whereas as soon as I get this listing, I just boom, email it out email to my it. list yeah. of thousands of people that you know to my entire database i would just have such a massive database that I would be able to boom Com commercial real estate is a little bit like that too you it know is. things things don't sell on the, on the open market they usually go sell through email or yeah, phone call I mean, tax once a commercial deal hits hits the open market normally it's been basically yeah. that's it's not basically a good deal the trash can yeah. for commercial properties <laughs> it's right. like everybody's yeah. already looked at it and yeah. passed on it <laughs> and so now let's throw it out there and see if for we sure. can get somebody in the open market so the goal for the commercial buyer is to get a hold of all the brokers that are doing deals and just put sit on uh, get on their lists you know that's what i to get them to send you deals you mean yeah it yeah. just depends on what part of the commercial realm you are you know if you're the broker if you're the buyer you know if you're the seller you know, if you're the buyer, if you're the buyer, you're looking yeah, if you're for the deals. buyer. Yeah. Yeah. If you're the buyer. Yeah. Having great relationships with the commercial brokers that yeah. get these off market deals where you basically get privy to. You just have to let them know that you're a serious buyer because they're just going to yeah. gonna down the list. Who, who's the you best buyer? You got to build your reputation with yeah. the brokers yeah. who, you know, get the deals. I got a question for you. So your weekly email, right? So you would call and you would call the owner, and if they say, yeah, I'm not interested, most of them probably not, you get an email. But then you don't follow up. You just you just keep the email, you do the weekly email. Yeah, I mean, that week. wasn't ever like the strategy. The strategy was to call them every once in a while, check on them, yeah. you know, in the back of my mind, you know, that was what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, I just never got around to it. Yeah. Like I have a box, I have a box in my closet uh -huh. that's on real paper. Uh -huh. of every single phone number I ever called of property owners for the last 20 years, right? Because before Red X and auto dialers, you know, I hand out everything. And I wrote every, everything was written down on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. right? Like I would have the hundred numbers that I found, I would write, the, write them down on a piece of paper. Um, and I have a box of all those phone numbers with notes and everything. And I kept all that because I was like, I'll call these people again. You know what I mean? But I never did. Yeah. And why not? You were going the for reason, the next. And the reason yeah. why I never did is not because I was going for the next, the next, the next. If I was just going for the next, 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 then I, I could have said, okay, let me time block a week to call through my database, right? It wasn't a on to the next, next, next. It was that I was too busy servicing clients, buying properties. Mm -hmm. And so like for eight hours, it got to where like for eight hours, I was literally just showing property, negotiating, writing offers, negotiate, uh, uh, going to listing appointments, you know. Um, Do you, you think know. you could have skipped the calls just by a bunch of emails? No. You think the calls made, uh, made yeah. a difference? Yeah. 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 Everybody bought, wants to cut I bought them. a lot of emails and right. I sold a lot of properties off that. Um, because now, like, for example, you, get an e you talk to somebody, you, you get an email, Five years down the road, they reach out to you. They don't remember probably your voice anymore. That that's that's one scenario. Uh -huh. Another scenario is you call them and they buy something today. Another yeah. scenario is they buy something in a month. Yeah. Another scenario is they buy something in six months, year, two years, ten years. So all these scenarios happen, right? It just depends on them and who created the deepest relationship with with that. 
property owner. Uh, I remember I remember in the first year, I remember I met one guy. He's uh, also started at the same time with me. And we were talking how you grow and I grow. And uh, he says, cold, cold, dad, don't do it. Yeah. And I'm like, and I felt so good because I was doing it. I wasn't getting too much uh, business out of it, but I was getting listings in my first, very first year. I was grabbing listings, pretty good listings at the 2.5% commission. That, that was, I was super happy with it. And I knew that this would not be my probably scalable business model because I couldn't, I, 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 I was, I, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't my passion. You know, I was doing it because I, I got nothing else to do. I got to do something yeah. to, to make money. And uh, I was, I was, I was looking at him like this is probably 99% of agents thinks that, that it doesn't work. Yeah. It worked. So I got probably maybe throughout my first couple of years, I probably got like maybe 20, 30 and then referrals from those cold calls that I did. Probably maybe all together, maybe 50 sales I got from the cold calls. Uh, but altogether, probably it grew, and now I don't even know where the deals come from. They're, they're all from referrals. What did you transition media. to? I have videos. I did a lot of uh, fa uh, videos and put it out on a Facebook. And I did restaurant reviews videos. Those are where the one of my back. I heard that from Gary Vee. You know, you do the local mayor of your town. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I went out to restaurants, did interviews, put it on the Facebook, spread it out. People would share, and that's how I... Uh, got my rec name People out. People DM you and say, yeah, Look and then, property or whatever. Yeah, and then uh, everything comes from Facebook and Instagram DMs. So that's where my client comes. And now client comes from you've been recommended. By who? I don't remember. Some couple people recommended. Yeah. But I, I went into a little niche, uh, Ukrainians in Chicago. That was my niche because I speak that language and it was easier to, for me to, uh, to talk to that community. Yeah. And so people, it's a tight group, and so people know each other, and so that's how it was uh, for me. Nice. So like I, I was a niche, and plus not only niche, I how saw that nobody. The, how did you get to those people? What'd you do? Did you door knock? Did you do? I mean, how did you? I did a video and sent okay. it to Facebook, local Facebook yeah. Yeah. groups. Yeah. That was my thing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I did yeah, like. I know a guy. He sold seventy-five million, doing uh, just putting listings in in in, uh, in Facebook groups. Not a Last listings, year. my videos. No, I'm saying I know a guy. Uh, for the listings, oh. Yeah, I know another guy. He took listings, and he would put it on Facebook Marketplace, the uh -huh. listing, and he would share that to 10 groups a day. And he sold $75 million Really? Off of just doing that, you know, so. Yeah. I know you went to Gary Vee. Mm hmm Yeah. I still talk uh, to him. I talk to him every year. Really? We do, we do a once a year meeting. What's, uh, how much that cost to meet uh, with Gary? I did 4Ds, which was 10 k Mm-hmm. So that was go to his office all day. You know, we got to spend a lot of time with him and his team. Yeah. Right. All the different departments of his. Why company. did you do it? I wanted to look at him right in the face and yeah. say, hey, you know, because he can't really, he doesn't answer DMs. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like he does, but not all of them. You know, he didn't, I don't sure. think he's ever looked at mine, but I just wanted to be like, I like to be around energy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and like people like that. But, but literally like. When I started into the coaching side of things, um, I was already doing a lot of the stuff he talks about, but not to the level he talks about it. And then I ran into his content. A buddy showed me his, one of his videos and uh, started following him. And then I like started like a, applying what he was saying to my coaching business. And like that, what, that's what kind of, that was a big influence in me going for free and- um, For coaching for free. Yeah, the yeah. coaching you for free. You used to charge and you went for all yeah. free. And, um, and then once I went free, everything blew up, you know, like the coaching business blew up, the, my following blew up, you know, I started to get recognition and speech offers and all this stuff. And, um, I just wanted to tell him face to face, like you had a big influence in like where I'm at and where I'm going, mm -hmm. you know, and the whole, uh, mission is to reduce the failure rate in the industry, you know, so there's a real philanthropy side of this whole thing and um he had, he had a real big hand in it, even though he didn't even know who i was yeah and so i wanted to a be around the energy but b tell him face to face you know what he did for me and stuff so that was cool i didn't really get anything out of that day except for just hanging out with him yeah um and then i got his one of one of his first um nfts right which granted me a five minute convo with him once a year for three years i see and so, and that was, at the time it was 8,000, mm -hmm. um, but crypto crashed since then. Mm -hmm. So I think I've had, I, I, you know, I like, I got offers for that NFT for $80,000.
<laughs> yeah, I got it for 8,000 and I had offers for 80,000. Now I'm getting offers for like 8,000. Mm -hmm. basically what I paid for it. Mm -hmm. Well, you're still going to um, keep it, right? Yeah, I'm it's, never going to sell it. It's good for to well, even good even, value. Yeah, even after, so, so the NFT gets you like, it's tickets to his huge conference every year, mm -hmm. which I can't go to, unfortunately, because I'm just speaking at my own conferences and stuff. But the reason I got it is, is because you got that five minute conversation with him once a year. Now, if I knew then what I, what I know now, I would have got a different NFT that got me more time. You could, you could have, you could have bought an NFT to go spend all day with your team, you know, at his office, strategizing with him. You could go, there was all kinds of different things. Um, but this year, this next year will be our third year. And then, you know, the utility of the NFT will be gone at that point. So I don't know what he'll, he'll do something with it, I'm sure, at uh -huh. that point. But like it's the first Gary V NFT. And he literally was the first one that did a really successful NFT project. I feel like that first NFT, you know, batch is going to be worth a lot of money one day, you know. But even if it's not, I don't really care. I got the value out of, I got way more value out of what I paid to what I got. I really but, uh, like Gary's style of, you know, one time he said that the um, sales is just bad marketing. You know, he says that building brand is what lasts a long time. That's yeah. what we're all about. You know, we'll pay a lot of more money for the swoosh on a on shoe. Yeah. Uh, and then just the same shoe without yeah. the, the thing. And yeah. I literally like his style of giving out free everything, give mm -hmm. the tips out. I've got so many clients just because I just give them some tips and then But he charges for stuff too, back. right? So he, yeah. he does an NFT project and sells out for 50 million. Yeah. But that was like the big ask after how many years of no, free No, 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 that wasn't the that wasn't the big ask. I mean there there were plenty other big asks that are yeah. that are like you don't realize. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the 4Ds. Like I paid 10k yeah. to go sit at his office. But now you're asking for his time, so he has to charge for it. No, I understand. But still, at the same time, there's asks. There's been asks the whole time. You know what I mean? It's the allure of the brand, right? Um, whereas he's not, right? It's 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 Vayner Media that's charging in ten grand, not Gary V. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so he camouflages it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he also also brings way more value than he ever you know, ask for. For sure. But that five minute conversation every year, every single, we've had two so far. And mm -hmm. every single time it's like, I have a, I have one major question on my mind about my business that I'm just like, man, what do I do here? You know? And then, and then we have the conversation and then afterwards I have real complete clarity. Yeah. Exactly. The same thing happened know. to me when I went to Ryan Sarahant uh, office in New York in 2018. He posted on his Instagram, buy 100 of my books, I'll give you one hour of my time. I jumped on it. I was broke. Don't care. Put it on the credit card. I go. So I went there. I didn't hear nothing new. Nothing mm. super new that I didn't know. But just... Was it one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. One, an hour like this uh, in his office. And he just told me a couple of things that I kind of knew, but I needed to hear from somebody about it. As soon as I hear it, open opens up, green light, I go full, full time. So I just didn't... I just didn't... Uh, um, like this, for me, I sometimes uh, what what helps me is just hearing from somebody. Give me that. I want to hear this. Yeah. As soon as I hear, it, same thing with with you. When you were putting out content, nothing new, but I heard that from you, and I'm like, I don't hear it from anybody else. I mm. watch the YouTube 24/7. I'm all in into this content. Yeah. And only you were pointing out that you know losing deals is good stuff. You take get your time back. You know, closings happening every day. This stuff was like, okay, okay, I got it. Yeah, I'm going yeah. all in. Because in the beginning, I also thought maybe it's a flat fee. Maybe I'm seeing these flat fee companies coming up. Maybe this industry is going, I don't know where it's going. Where am I putting in my time here? Yeah. But then I started researching, you know, so with him as well, he told me a couple things and I'm like, okay, going. I'm going back to Chicago. I'm going to kill it. So after that, it went up. So I like this, you know, uh, um, buying your knowledge a little bit from people that like you went to Gary Vee, yeah. you went to meet the... Uh, you also for the social media for YouTube, you met to Kevin. Mm -hmm. In uh, is that is that the reason uh, you went to? Oh no, that was one of the reasons. One I wanted to again. I wanted to be around um, and meet Kevin. You're talking about. I went meet around Kevin, on yeah. his jet. He uh, he's selling 
basically tickets to shadow him for a day where he'll mm. he'll take you on his jet and uh, along with two other people that paid to shadow mm -hmm. and you go look at property because he's he did a, he has a real estate startup company house hack where yeah. they're going to buy properties flip the properties um and uh and so i did it because a it was so cheap right it was three grand yeah right and the dude has two million you know youtube subscribers and it's just it blew you know, up it, after the COVID. putting out content like four videos a day yeah 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 you, you're yeah, also yeah. putting out a lot lately so he he uh it's a different he has a different energy yeah. right i wanted to be around that energy for a second and really get some time to kind of pick his brain dude i got to pick his brain for the entire day dude I, we met at uh 7 30 mm -hmm. and we were there i was there it was 12 hours right seven o'clock at night we we flew to north california looked at some houses and then we flew back to santa monica where he interviewed a, a guy from uh, arc invest and um spent some time with him in the car like all over the place so my biggest thing was like please explain house hack to me his yeah. company you know because i wanted to invest in it mm -hmm. which i did um but i didn't do it until i actually met with him and i wanted to understand i wanted to get all my questions answered about what exactly it is from the inside out um that was that was a big thing and then just kind of what is it hmm? what is it so he raised a bunch of money mm -hmm. And then he has that money sitting in bonds right now, just collecting yeah. interest until the market bottoms out, mm -hmm. right? So, so he's spending time right now going from town to town around the West, um, picking out which cities and towns he wants to invest in, you know. Um, you so know, basically uh, a syndication, but in a single it's, family it's house. Not, it's not really syndic it's not a syndication. When you, when you, when you, the money he raised is equity in the company. Uh -huh. You own equity in the company. You don't own the real estate. I mean, the real estate is owned by the company you own equity in, but you're not, you don't own like, like with syndication, you own a percentage of this development. Yeah. Right. But this is, you own a percentage of house hack. Right. So, um, of the company and his goal is in 10 years to IPO it and all this stuff. Um, but what he's going to do is once he picks out, so he's spending this time right now while the market's going down to um, map out the areas he wants to buy in, that he feels like jobs are coming into the area, people are moving there. Yeah. The area we went to, I don't want to say the name of the town because yeah. somebody's from there, but um, but there was no reason for anybody to move there. No. You know? So I don't think it's going to be a place that he invests in, but he had to go look at it and talk to the agents. And right now he's building relationships with agents, just like we talked about with commercial. Yeah. He's building relationships with agents because he wants off-market houses that need work. Yeah. Um, and he's a and, cash buyer. And, yeah. And then he want, and then he's going to map out the areas he wants to buy in. So he's going to have all that in place as the market is going down, as the market bottoms out. And then he's going to go out and buy these it's a deals. Long play. Yeah. He's gonna go out and buy these deals, say later this year, he might start buying or early next year, and he'll buy stuff that needs a lot of work, that's way underpriced, he'll put the work in, have all this equity in it, we'll get it rented out, right? Then uh, he'll go out and buy 50 to 100, 100 homes, with we'll just one at a time, buy them, fix them up, rent it, buy it, fix it up, rent it, and build the portfolio to 50 to 100 homes, and then sell the entire portfolio to an institutional buyer right one time deal then he'll take that money and go do it all over again right so he'll just keep on cycling the money through 50 to 100 homes at a time that's the general overview of it so i wanted to really see it from the inside out before i threw money at it um I and believe. then also maybe like pick some brain on a social uh youtube that was the, that media. was the biggest part was the house hack thing um and then yeah i wanted to get his okay. take on uh, my channel, mm -hmm. you know, because we started our channels at the same time. He has two million. I have a hundred thousand. So, but mine is way more niche. Mine is real yes. estate agents specifically. Mm -hmm. His is investors, entrepreneurs, financial, you know, people looking for financial advice. So he has a much broader audience. Whereas I've stayed in my lane of real estate agents. For sure. And what um, are you? What are you thinking now? No, I'm staying in my lane. Yeah. 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 I, I mean. Um, it's not necessarily about number of subscribers, you know, or even views, you know, it's about quality. 
I've got a very valuable audience yeah. because it's so niche to real estate agents. Um, you know, my 100000 on YouTube is worth more than some people's 500000 on YouTube uh, or even a million. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of depends. But, no, I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to mix it up. So, like, I'm bringing live calls back. So I'm going to be yeah. making live calls. I'm going to have a session where I make live calls. I'm going to have a session where I coach agents making live calls. Um, I'm going to bring that back because that's when my channel was really growing. Yeah. And I think that's what, that was the most exciting thing that I did that really brought people to the channel and really helped people get over their fears of making calls and stuff. I mean, even when you get a Facebook or Instagram DM, I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is to communicate with them there and then eventually take it to the phone and call them. I mean... You've got to have dedicated time that you're sitting down calling people, right? Rather sure. following up or just calling leads that have come in or whatever, right? And so whether you're calling Facebook leads or cold calls or Sphere or whatever, like, you're going to got to be on the phone. And so I think when I was making the live calls, which I got away from, um, I think that that was the most value that I was bringing at the time. So I want to bring it back. I think I'm going to see a big jump in... in uh, if I combine bringing that back with all my new knowledge of how to create better content on these platforms, um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm about to go for a, a nice little run in terms of grow, channel growth. We'll see. So when did you start making content? Sixteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Um, that's when you went into coaching. Mm -hmm. That's when you started coaching. That's yep. when the avenue you picked yep. for the for yep. the content. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, up to that point, like I was making a million years an agent with no social media up to that point. Yeah. You know, I mean, I got to where that 17 was my first year made a mill. Mm -hmm. I was already, I could have just said, I don't need social media. Nothing. I don't need to coach. Yeah. I don't need to do any of that. I'm, I'm making a million a year. What do I need anything for? You got bored. Yeah, I was bored. And um, I needed something, you know, like. New I, challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm very, I'm a very, not competitive. I don't competitive, not the word. I'm just, I just like to work hard. I just felt like real estate, I wasn't working hard anymore. I was anymore, working like yeah. 10, 15 hours a week in my business. I was just doing a weekly email. People will call me and say, I want to buy this. And I just write a contract. It was just too easy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's right. yeah. uh, what does your day look like now? You're a full-time kind of creator now. So it's like, who does the research? How, do you have it planned out or is just, you you I'm trying to get more like, um, like the way I have been creating content, it's kind of like, okay, what's on Ricky's mind today? Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. But I'm gonna get a little bit more structured. Um, like, you know, of course I want to post at least once a day on YouTube. I know I'm posting four to six times a day on Instagram every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to post uh, multiple. I mean, I'm at least so I'm posting multiple times now on YouTube every day. Um, I want to get. I want to have one really good video every day. I may still post multiple times, but I want to kind of have it mapped out a little better. Um, I've been doing a lot of breaking news type stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I want to I want to kind of scale that back a tad. I want to do a show where I'm making live calls, a show where I'm coaching an agent making live calls. I want to do a live coaching session where people come on and get it. I give give I give advice on their situations. I want to do a sales training uh, video. It's like three steps to get more listings or you know, scripts or, you know, whatever, social media. Um, I want to do one breaking news video mm -hmm. about the market, right? Instead of doing like three in a week, which is what I've been doing, you know, really take one and really go deep with the current market every week. Um, and then do a, uh, now I have podcasts that I'm posting left and right now, you know, Zoom calls with brokerages and teams and coaching calls and podcasts that I'm on. You don't post Gary Vee uh, uh, phone calls. The ones, that, private. the ones that I have with Gary? Yeah, because their five-minute conversations are so fast, and the questions I'm asking are just real. For you and not yeah, for Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's super selfish questions, right? Because I'm really trying to, like, find clarity on stuff that I need. Mm -hmm. I thought about, okay, I got five minutes. Why don't I kind of try to make it like a five-minute podcast and post, you know, which I may do this last call, which I probably will do, just so I have some content with me and him. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, jamming for a second. I probably will do that this year since it's our last call. 
but yeah, that's why, because like, you know, what I'm asking is like, yeah, fucking help it's me. For you, like, not yeah, because like I'm having a mental breakdown is what it is. Yeah. Whenever I'm, I'm but it's like, cool. It's it's very good for the audience. I mm -hmm. want to see that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I'm you, sure you'd you love to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you like sit down every day, every day, and then you, you do like how many? So videos? my daily, four, yeah. Five so videos? my daily routine. So like I get up at four thirty, five o'clock. Yeah. Right? You go to the gym. Stuff. Like I get that. up and read first thing. So I'll read for like thirty minutes or so. Um, or I may answer some DMs. Kind of depends on how backed up I am on DMs. Like it's really wild now. Like I can hardly keep up. I can <laughs> see where it's going to get away from me at some point. Um, but I've been able to keep up so far. Like I called up yesterday on the plane right up here, and now I'm like three hours behind. Like I just feel back up, you know, since then. So it's just kind of getting out of control. But. Um, I'm at the gym by six, I meet my dad there. So we lift from six to seven, then I'll go home and run two miles. Mm. And then I'll take a shower and stuff, and then I'm in my office by eight. So then I start like organizing my day. Yeah. Um, and just really figuring out where I need to be when I need to be there. And then from there, it just depends on what's, what's on my schedule there. I may have a, a podcast I have to do, or a Zoom call, or a coaching call. Um, you know, or, you know, a live I'm going to do, may record some videos. But you know. Like your YouTube videos is one setup, and then you have a bunch of reels going on on Instagram. Yeah. How so do you do all this? Yeah, so it's what crazy. It? It's crazy because I have my desk. Uh, it's in a real small room. And so I have my desk and, um, and I have my setup with my mic and everything and my backdrop with the brick and stuff. Yes. And I have my camera here and lights and everything. And that's where I do my Zoom calls, that's where I do my podcast, and that's where I film my YouTube videos. And then directly across the room from me is a green screen. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is, is I take the same camera, I have one camera, I take the same camera and I, I turn it around and set it up on my desk, okay, <laughs> looking at the green screen. Um, and this is after I've brainstormed what the reels are gonna be and decided if I'm gonna sit all the way down on a seat, sit on a stool or stand. Um, and then I'll get the frame right with the camera, you know, and the settings. You do everything right. on your own? Everything on my own. And I'll get the frame right, the settings, you know, and then turn the lights around this way because they were that way. Turn the <laughs> lights around this way. <laughs> and, um, and get all set up there. Yeah, and then you crank out like probably 20, 30 out of the... Uh... Yeah, I normally do like 10 to 20 at a time. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do like 10 to 20 because with Instagram, I've got the green screens where I'm looking straight at the camera. Then I've got the podcast clips. Then I've got my speech clips. Then I've got the uh, the green screen on Instagram with the article in the background. Yeah, you then gotta I've have got somebody who edits all this. Twitter, Twitter uh, quote posts, yes. stuff like that. Um, so the yeah, the the ones that with captions on the Instagram, and the, and the ones with captions on YouTube. Those are edited by. I wonder if our reels are edited by the same guy. What do you think, Carlos? You think we, so? Um, I don't know. <laughs> we have it. We we order it from Fiverr, right, Carlos? We order it from Fiverr. No. These guys aren't from Fiverr. They reached uh, out to me on Instagram, and um, years ago. So. Yeah, but uh, the, the style, you know, this. Uh, Pretty similar. Yeah. This. You know, well, I, don't I mean, know. It's like kind of some template, maybe software, maybe yeah. everybody's using. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like whatever's hot at the time, or you know, you yeah. see it across everybody's stuff. You know, so I think it, you know, it's good to have that high quality edit. You know, but it's more so what's your hook. You know, what's your what's your value? Uh, so I got a question for you now. So the brand, your brand, right? So you're doing all the content, you're giving out everything for free. You're doing the speeches. You don't yeah. try. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there is some fee, but, but they don't make money. There's no it. fee. Um, all the, most of my speeches, they just pay for my travel. Yeah. They make sure that I require travel for me and my family, right, with an extra day wherever we go. Um, the registration list of people that register for the event and um, a video guy to be there to film everything. Yeah. I don't charge anything. There's no speaking fee. Where's anything. the money? Oh, what's the goal? Like, where's the? How do you make? Well, I've got um, the the investing company, mm -hmm. right? So you know, I mean, I make a mill a year there, flipping houses, rental properties, and now we're getting into syndicating, you know, big apartments. Yeah. So 
I'm kind of like Kevin on that front, right? Uh -huh. I'm researching and looking at deals every day, but I know that the market's drifting down. So I'm kind of just like being patient. Mm -hmm. More and more deals are going to come out as, as the year progresses on big multifamily deals. You can't double the cost of debt, you know, in commercial and expect the market to stay the same. same. It's not going to sure. happen. Yes. Um, I'm on the same boat with that. And so I'm just kind of just chilling, you know, waiting. And, but, you know, through, the, through my brand, when these deals do pop up, I'll have the ability to go out and raise money, as much money as I need, right? So there's one. I've got my real estate business. So the real estate business with me and dad, you know, we're not in like a high relocation area. Like there's not people flocking to Alabama, but it is a tourist town. We have 7 million visitors a year. And so I get, a, I get a little bit of referrals, you know, one or two a month, something like that. So from followers around the country or yeah, whatever. So that's I cool. See. I've got the coaching business here to diamond. So that makes a mill a year. How? It's free. Um, no? Affiliates. Affiliates. Yeah. Affiliate marketing and sponsorship deals. So that's the power of the brand. Yeah. You get, you get followers. Now everybody wants to do business with you. Yeah, exactly. Sponsorship deals, um, you know, ad revenue through, through the platform. How much do you make on YouTube, on your channel? I make, you know, I was making like five to 10 K a month and I turn all the ads off. Really? Right. About two years ago, maybe a Why? year and a half ago. Why? I was like, and it was dumb to do, but I was tired of seeing, I was tired of seeing ads of people before my videos where I'm saying one thing and then the ads are saying, don't do this. And it's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just got tired of seeing it, but I turned them back on here recently. Mm -hmm. And so I'm back at 5k and I'll just, I'll continue to build that. But as I continue building, I feel like, like my chance, I have this really, because back in September, I quit posting on Instagram because my following had flatlined, right? At like 225,000, like for a year, it didn't grow. Like I was new followers, but I was losing as many as I was gaining. Mm. And um, I was like, this is, this sucks, right? And I was just posting whatever, whenever. So I went back to the drawing board. I called Meta, I had several conversations with them. I studied, I, I researched the, the Instagram algorithm. Um, I did a lot of work put a lot of work into understanding how to grow on Instagram. And then when I came back, that's when I started posting four to six times a day. And I've grown by, there's months where I've grown by over 100, 200 a month, 200 a day. Um, but it, the average is well over 100 a day since I've been doing this. Um, 100 new for, uh, organic followers, right? And so now I'm up to 235, mm -hmm. right? And that's 10,000 growth in that time net. Right, it's really about twenty thousand or more. It's really more than that growth of real new followers because, again, like anybody that's on Instagram, if you go to your analytics, you'll see you've got new followers every day and you got people that unfollowed you every day a lot. And so, um, um, you say it's hundred percent real estate agents. I know probably 95, 90, like a lot of it's real estate agents because yeah. my content is real estate agent, you know, driven, but. But at what my point is, is I went back to the drawing board and I figured that out and I hacked that entire system. Like for me to get 200 followers a day organically is like boss. That's, that's like, I could, I could stay right there, you know, and be happy. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to go out here and get a million followers tomorrow. Like yeah. 200 a day is like really something for me. And that, so. that's happened after you started posting a lot today. Yeah. Four, four to six times a day. That requires a lot of work now to grow. It does, but if you have the right systems in place, yeah. you know, and you can create quality content that you've got the systems in place and the team in place to edit, you know, when you're supposed to post, what you're supposed to post, you know, it's not, it's not, as, it's not like, the thing is when you, when you start treating these, these platforms like a job, that's mm -hmm. the problem. People aren't treating it like a job, but treating it like it's just something on the side. Yes. And then there, it, you know, that's then, how I'm treating my Instagram. And then, so it's, it's just not doing anything. Yeah. But if you, if you treat it like a full-time job, whereas, okay, it's like when you clock into a, to a W2 job, you have to be there on time, right? And you're going to stay there till you leave. Same thing here. Like if you're supposed to post at eight and at 11 and at one and at three, you know, then you have to do it at those times and you treat it like that and you post when you're supposed to, then every time somebody picks up their phone and hits Instagram, there you are. 
no matter what time of day yeah. it is, there you are. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. You want to be right in front of everyone. You want to be right in their face every single time that they um, pick up their phone. But what I'm, the reason I mentioned all that is because I've kind of been in the same mode with YouTube here lately. Because once I figured out Instagram, I was like, let me go figure out YouTube now. Because I want to get YouTube to where I'm picking up two to 300 subscribers a day. Yeah. And right now it's like 50, something like that. I'll have days where I hit 100, 150, but you know, the average is like 50, 60 a day. That's good too. It's, it's okay, yeah. but I have 100,000 subs, yeah. and uh, you know, I'm not, you, that's not where I want to be. I want to be at two to 300 a day, um, new subs. And so that's why I'm, that's why I'm turning, I, and I've been working on YouTube for a while, but anyway, I just feel like with all the knowledge that I've gained over the last 90 days with YouTube, that I'm about to see the same, similar growth on YouTube as I've seen on Instagram over the last six months. And, um, and so I expect the ad revenue to really shoot up, you know, like two or three, you know, times. Do you so think we'll that real estate agents for their business should be doing social? Yeah. Like, uh, but do important stuff in the morning and then do social? For me. Like calls, tax. For me, yeah, for me, um, it's, it's make calls all morning, do social all afternoon. Yeah. Do a weekly email. That's it. You have rentals or you keep, or you no, just I have flip? rentals. You have rentals? Yeah, I don't like flipping. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I flip because I have partners and I love my partners, but if it was up to me, we wouldn't flip at all. We would buy them, fix them, and keep them, you know. Maybe sell the ones that are less desirable, but, you know, keep 70% of what we're flipping. So this year, your goal is uh, 100 million. Mm -hmm. Buy a, a real estate over uh, close to 100 million value. Mm -hmm. We've taken a swing at a couple. We took a swing at one for 10 mil. We took a swing at one for 20 mil. We took a swing at one for 16 mil. Um, you know, we didn't get any of these. So those are all in Florida. And can they still sell over ask, yeah? Or close to it? I think they're still on the market, honestly. Oh. I think those three oh, yeah. are still on the market. They're asking too much. Too much, yeah. yeah. So we made, an, we made offers for what they're worth. Now, the one that was 20 mil was an apartment complex in Orlando. And um, they had another offer that was higher on the table. This was just a couple of weeks ago, and I don't, I didn't, remember, I don't, I didn't hear back if they took that offer. Our offer was lower than that one, not too much lower, but a little bit lower. Um, I don't know if they took that other offer or if it's still on the market on that one. Or and not. what's your goal with these? You buy them and you're gonna hold them forever, or just gonna for five years and you're gonna? I think hold forever. Um, yeah. and then sell, sell the ones that are just don't end up being great producers, yeah. the ones that aren't in great areas. So if we build a portfolio over the next, you know, seven, five to seven years and say we pick up, you know, three a year or something like that, and we've got 10 to 20 properties, um, in the next, you know, five to seven years and, you know, six of them are just not as great as the other 14. We sell those six, you know, 1031 that money into better assets. And we just kind of keep stair-stepping. And I mean, the goal is, you know, at the end of the day, after a 20, 30, 40 year period that we've basically started today building this portfolio. And then every year that goes by, we decide, okay, which properties do we want to sell this year? Right. And, and, and then we get better at also spotting the, 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 the better quality properties, sure. you know, with more experience. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you just continue to condense the portfolio down to where you have this amazing portfolio of just incredible properties. Whose you approach know? you like better, Ben Mala or Grant Cardone? Ben buys and flips, right? Yeah. He buys rehabs, 1031s, and always keeps buying. And he's going into retail. Yeah. Commercial all and all that stuff. Yeah. Three is triple nads. Grant only buys A plus, um, yeah, and only apartments. Yeah, I don't know. Um, He's only A plus. He's like buying. I, I, it, such I don't. A I don't. Nice I don't know place. the. I don't know the tax benefits completely of like I don't know what the depreciation benefits are of what Ben does because I don't know how long he holds the properties. Two years. If he actually a takes a depreciation, if he's taking bonus depreciation on that, that could be a great model 
because you know that with grant 100 percent you take bonus depreciation like that's you know that's a big reason why he doesn't pay taxes because yeah. he buys these apartment complexes um and he takes bonus depreciation that you know he can write off basically as much as he made you yeah. know and then you pay zero taxes um if ben has the same setup i don't know i think it's dealer's choice uh, i like both yeah right? i like both um honestly well, it seems like you're doing a lot of stuff you know you got the coaching going on you got all so the... i've got the coaching business real estate coaching yeah i've got sales i've got investing yeah i've got the brokerage i've got mortgage now and now social media coaching so yeah that's kind of the the that's kind of the umbrella you, right now your goal is to keep them growing mm -hmm. and always have all these and even yeah. add on add on add on yeah any yeah. any like uh like I'm pretty selective to what what businesses i'm going to get into because yeah. as you you know i mean i'm pretty spread out yeah so it's got to be something that's really interesting you know for me it, to dive in is your day super busy on the phone like like my phone right now. It's like I don't know. It's like my phone's not 20, too busy on the phone. Crazy. No, I mean like my, busy, my my phone's busy in the DMs. Yeah. I can't keep up there, but um, as far as like people calling me, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Which is perfect for me perfect. because it's cool because like for my team, um, like I put out so much content. I basically told everybody everything they need to know. I don't get a whole lot of questions like what do I do here, what do I do there. You know, because they already know what I'm going to say, because I've already said it on 15 million videos. That's one cool thing about being a free coach is when I bring people into my ecosystem to be part of my brokerage or team, they already know a lot of my stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't get a whole lot of ongoing questions there. Um, and the cool thing is, like, calls that I do get are, like, from billionaires and, you know, people that are building billionaire billion-dollar companies with me. And, like, you know, they're big calls for the most part, so... That's nice. Um, no, 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 dude. Most of my time is spent, like, how do we create better content, you know, filming. And you sat off the camera. That was something you wanted to do? That was your goal? Like, before even going into real estate sales? Yeah, because, like, when you're in the rat right not before I went into real estate sales. I didn't I even know about social media before in a real right, estate sales. Yeah. Social media wasn't even invented yet mm -hmm. when I got into real estate sales. But um, when I started doing social media back in 2017... You know, it was interesting. Um, I was still doing sales. I mean, I did sales all the way till last year. You know, like mm -hmm. last March is when I took a step back. Um, but it did get to a point where I, um, you know, I was like, I, you know, I would rather, instead of like having buyers and sellers call me out of the blue with all these problems or want me to go here, want me to go there, you know, just rat race. You know, sales is a rat race. That's a beautiful rat race because you take the rat race and you, and you make millions, yes. right? And then you take a step back and say, okay, where can I go really, you know, help a lot of people or build other businesses or spend time with my family? Like, it's a vehicle. But it's nowhere, I believe, that people really want to be forever. People might say, I love sales. I want to do this forever. No, you don't. You just don't know that you don't. <laughs> you, you're going to until you don't. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a point where I was like, yeah, of course. I'd rather be at home, spending my time brainstorming videos that could actually help millions of people versus getting a call from an upset seller or, or even a happy seller that just wants me to drive 30 minutes to look at a house or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just didn't excite me anymore. You know, I was getting calls from people that were like wanting to list mm -hmm. million dollar homes and stuff. And I was like cringing, looking at the caller ID. You know what I mean? I was like, God, I don't want to talk to this person. You know, like I know they're calling to list this million dollar piece <laughs> of property. And I'm like, damn it, I don't want to answer this. Right. <laughs> when you get to that point, but you yeah, know that you're you looking, know. you're looking back 10 years ago and you were like, I, I would be happy to get that call. A lot of excited. listeners. Like, yeah, oh excited. Yeah. Excited. Because that's life changing call. Because that's all I had going on. <clears throat> that's all that. I mean, I didn't have social media. I didn't have all these other opportunities. All I had was this million dollar listing. That was the only thing happening at that point 10 years ago. And so, yeah, I was super happy. I didn't care about anything else. Like, yes. I couldn't answer it fast enough. So. But that's when you see you growing, you know? When, when this thing doesn't excite you anymore. You have well, we were talking about it before, like reinventing yes. yourself, you know? Yeah. 
I used to be a roofer. Yeah. You know, and then I was a real estate agent. Yeah. You know, and then, you know. Um, now you all the sorts of things. <laughs> yeah. Like then, you know, then I wrote books and started doing social when I was still doing real estate. And, you know, if you look at the content I made day one versus now. It's totally, Your content shifts. Totally um, different, you know. And uh, yeah. Then, I've noticed. In two or three years, it'll be even more different, you know. Yeah. So we all have to kind of evolve with. Uh, but you know, real estate agents have a lot of needs. Not not only learning how to work with sellers and buyers, they also need uh, they also need help with how do I do the taxes right? How do I prepare so I pay less taxes at the end of the year legally? You know, how do I develop my uh, uh, communication skills? How do I learn the public speaking stuff? All these things, you know, like I've uh, I real will, estate investing. Like yeah. that's the thing too. A lot of agents don't invest in real estate. They that's sell a problem. it. They sell you it, should. but they don't invest in it. You know. you know, you're the closest person to the deal. Yeah, so that, that that's a big message of mine this year is, number one, um, the agents that are struggling, that got in during COVID, you know, not to quit. You know, if you have to step back and get a job, fine. Yes. Who cares, right? Yeah. Do that, but don't quit real estate. Quit. Keep yeah. trying. Yeah. That's my loudest message. My next message is buy real estate for the guys who have saved up money and have a down payment and stuff like that. Um, you should be, you should have a strategy like buy one property a year, two properties a year, three properties a year, whatever. You should be building that portfolio for the day that you don't want to sell real estate anymore because that day will come and you're going to wish you would have been building this portfolio yeah. five, ten years ago. And the third one is that to do more social media. Mm -hmm. You know, agents need to do more social media. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, do video, do written word. You know, write sure. a write a blog on a Facebook post, mm -hmm. you know, and put an awesome picture of yourself next to a house and run it as an ad. You know, you'll get clicks. You know, there's so many different ways. There's so many ways to use social media. Yeah. I have like a Facebook group for agents in Chicago. Uh, I just started recently because I'm building a brokerage, uh, you know, independent. Uh, and um, so I put their words. I don't put, I just share my YouTube links as well. But I also type in some tips that just comes up in my head like oh yeah no, 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 type in right. a lot of people see you know comments things like that so that's one sort one and way it wasn't a video yeah you know? so yeah. like i'm big on video of course yes everyone should do video but don't come to me and say i'm not doing social media because i don't like video social media is more the, than video yes you know there's images there's written word there's ads there's all kinds of things so, you know on that note we'll probably um gonna finish up i know you have to go uh if anybody wants to reach out to you DM, yeah. Instagram, or? That's the best place, <laughs> because best I place. hardly even look at any other DMs. Yeah. So, like, if you hit me on LinkedIn or Facebook or something, that's a real hit or miss. Yeah. Um, Zero to Diamond, you know, it's a social media platform. Yeah. I mean, there's 22,000 agents there. Um, you know, you, when you started coaching, did you think it's going to grow that much? It was my vision, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, I, I figured, like, you know, if a guy's selling 100 properties solo, you know, for that many years in a row, and he's going to teach any agent every single thing he knows for free that it has to blow up yeah i mean it just has to you know that was my thinking is that there's no way it's not um it took it a long time you know to not get so to... long six years well when you're in it it seems like a long time yeah when you look back and that's what i say about the current market right a lot of agents are thinking oh this is a tough market and stuff and i'm like in three years, when you look back at the stats of this market, you're going to say, wow, this was an incredible market. Yeah. It's the same thing if you look, go back and look at the stats right now to 2008. You go back and look at the stats of 2008, and you're like, that wasn't so bad. Prices were half half price. That would have been easy to sell. Yeah. You know, look at how many transactions there were. You're like, wow. <laughs> but when you're in 2008, yeah, you're like, this like, is the end of the world. Yeah. You know? I wasn't there, so, so I don't know. I just yeah. got in America. When you're in it, it seems like it's forever. Yeah. So like back in 2017 when I started and it didn't go to 22,000 that year, I was like, uh, like I was at like 5,000 YouTube subscribers. I'm like, why am I not at 100,000 yet? You know, and here I'm six years later at 100,000 looking back at the six years thinking, well, that wasn't so bad. It wasn't so long. But when you're in it, yeah. you're like, damn. Every day, yeah. every minute yeah. you're thinking about it. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, shoot. Yeah. So. Well, oh, thanks so much, Ricky. Thanks so much for your time. No, I appreciate you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Good to see you. Good to meet you. Thanks so much. Good. Hope to see you soon. Thanks, guys, for watching. 35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be the boss, but it costs, and these lames ain't like me.